Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I'm Tony Guerra, pharmacist and author of the Memorizing Pharmacology book series, bringing you mnemonics, cases, and advice for succeeding in pharmacology. Sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Let's get started with the show. Hey, welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. Today, we're going to go over eye and ear infection pharmacology and some mnemonics that can help you. Um, Let's get started here with um, what is maybe better known as swimmer's ear, but external ear infection. And so when you have an infection on the outer ear, then it actually makes sense to just use drops and put something on it. Uh, So you can use something that would be an antibiotic that would take care of the infection but also there's going to be some inflammation. And so we'll use some kind of steroid. So the medication that we can use is something like Ciprodex, which is a combination of ciprofloxacin and the floxacin ending tells us it's a fluoroquinolone antibiotic. The FL is for fluoro and then the oxacin is for quinolone. And then the dexamethasone, we've seen that sone ending before, that's a steroid for inflammation. Now, you do it a little bit differently for a child versus an adult. A child, you'll head put the head horizontally, pull the earlobe lobe down, and then apply the drop. So the word child ends in D, and then use that for D for down. Whereas an adult has a U in it, and we go adult up. So the head will be, again, horizontal. We pull the earlobe, the earlobe up and we apply the drop. So child down, adult up. When you have a middle ear infection, uh, the drops aren't going to be able to get to that infection. So we need an oral medication. And I remember my daughter had the tubes put in and a physician said, okay, well, you know what? This is our our week uh, meeting. Um, We'll we'll give her amoxicillin. Like, well, she's already been on amoxicillin for a whole week. It's like, oh, all right. Well, what that means is that It is a beta lactamase producing bacteria that is resistant to amoxicillin. And so beta lactamase is an enzyme that the bacteria secretes and it destroys the beta lactam ring and makes it ineffective in the penicillin. So just to be clear, the amoxicillin didn't work for a week. My daughter still had an infection in her ear and it was because the bacteria made an enzyme that basically broke the amoxicillin, uh, the amoxicillin ring. So we switched to something a little bit different. So we cross off amoxicillin and include amoxicillin with something called clavulanate. So augmentin is just that, something that augments amoxicillin by itself. And what clavulanate does is it kind of has the bacteria attack it instead of the amoxicillin, allowing the amoxicillin to do its job. Uh, You can do some... Uh, work with cephalosporins. Again, cephalosporins tend to begin with CEF or CEPH. So cephalochlor, which is C-chlor, and cefuroxime, which is sinusf, those are both second generation. Or you might see cefixime, which is suprax, uh, that's third generation. So what we're really doing with this middle ear infection is it's a resistant infection. We're going to give what's quotation fingers a stronger antibiotic. Now, why don't you want to give clavulanate? Why don't you just give that in the first place? Well, you want to reserve it for resistant infections, but also it tends to cause a lot of GI upset, uh, unlike amoxicillin by itself. Let's move on to the eyes. Uh, There's really three big conjunctivitis uh, that you have to deal with. There's the allergic, where we kind of put in an eye drop. Uh, Antihistamine is usually a good way to do it. Uh, Something viral, we might have to take an oral medication like oral acyclovir. Or if it's bacterial, we have lots and lots of eye drop antibiotics. Fluoroquinolones, like we talked about with the ear, aminoglycosides, gentamicin, tobramycin, uh, macrolides like erythromycin, and then others will see uh, the kind of neomycin type of thing. All right, well, let's start with the allergy eye drops, the antihistamines. Uh, There's just a number of them, and uh, there's not really as... Um, as good a you know stem as this. Although if you're familiar with loratadine, which is claritin, you notice olopatadine, which is patadae. Then ketotofen, which 
looks a lot like <laughs> ketoprofen, uh, which is a, um, a non-steroidal, uh, but that's Zatator. And then phenyramine, um, you may remember the chlorphenyramine, which is uh, you know chlorotrimeton from a long time ago. Uh, that was also an antihistamine, which is Opcon A or part of Opcon A. So again, uh, if the patient has allergy eyes, we're going to try to put an antihistamine drop in there. Uh, usually it's, there's some water, some redness. Uh, that's how we, you know, allergic conjunctivitis presents. When we talk about bacterial conjunctivitis, you're going to get some crud as it were, uh, and you're going to have eye drops and ointments available. Uh, you can use the fluoroquinolones. Again, that's the floxacin stem, ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, uh, aminoglycosides, tobramycin, gentamicin, the macrolides, erythromycin, and azithromycin. So again, uh, be careful with that mycin stem. A lot of drugs end in mycin. It just means that the streptomyces bacteria was used to actually make the antibacterial. Uh, and then the others like neomycin, polymyxin B and bacitracin, or polymyxin B and trimethoprim. So lots and lots of options when it comes to uh, bacterial conjunctivitis. Uh, viral conjunctivitis actually usually clears up in a week or two, maybe three weeks at worst. Uh, you'll probably use an oral medication like oral acyclovir if that's something we're going to use. Well, let's talk about actually instilling the drop itself. So you want to tilt the head back while looking up. That's the first thing. And this is kind of a natural thing. You kind of look up to the sky and tend not to look down. You're going to pull the lower eyelid down and away. And you're going to squeeze drops into that pocket. Then this is kind of the key is that you're going to, and you'll probably do this automatically. You'll close the eye, okay, to get those drops in there. So kind of four steps here. Tilt your head back while looking up. Pull the lower eyelid down and away squeeze the drops into the pocket, and then close the eye. Again, this information is informational only. If you have a medical condition, contact a medical professional. Thanks for listening to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. You can find episodes, cheat sheets, and more at memorizingpharm.com. Again, you can sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Thanks again for listening.